Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Hey there, Nation. Welcome to the show. We help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefskate, and it's time for another edition of Age of the Realms. These are our Warhammer Age of Sigmar battle reports. This is battle report number 19. It is a 1,000 point battle with myself and my Legion of the Hellmouth, which is my disciples of Sneech Army, versus my buddy Brother Grimm and the Crimson Killers of the Iron Jaws. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I decided to go with a brand new army for this battle report. Uh, no offense to the Sylvaneth. I love playing my Sylvaneth army, but I've been playing that army for 18 battle reports straight. In fact, I've been playing the Sylvaneth Army since I got involved with Age of Sigmar, and I pretty much, you know, I think I've done everything I pretty much could do with an army like that uh, uh, for, in terms of playing Warhammer. I showed you guys how to use Forest, I showed you guys how to use uh, different units, how to fight and all that kind of stuff. And to be quite honest with me, when I was playing my buddy Odeth and we decided to use the, uh, to use the Disciples of Sneech rules that came out just a little while ago, I actually thought it was kind of an intriguing army, decided I want to take that up for myself, so I decided to switch up my army. I'm doing 1,000 point battle reports now with my Legion of the Hellmouth. It is my brand new Disciples of Sneech Army. So I put together a thousand points with the troops and we're going to talk about exactly what my, mil mil my forces are for this one as well. So this is a very brand new debut of the army. My army is fully painted. I got all my um, miniatures kind of put together. It's a mixture of both Sneech Arcanites as well as Slaves to Darkness uh, kind of put together under a Sneech Alliance. So yeah, with any further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the individual miniatures of my army. We're just going to run through it real quick so that way you guys can see exactly what I'm taking. Run. I've never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. No one, not even you will remember if we were good men or bad. Why we fought or why we died. No. All that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Barbara pleases you, Kram. So grant me one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is our deployment phase. As you can see, we're fighting on a 4x4 table since both of us are packing 1,000 points. As you can see, I'm fighting on the near side of the board. My opponent, Brother Grimm, is taking the far side of the board. As you can see, I'm fighting a Hard Fist Battalion, so that I'm going to go up against uh, three units of Ard Boys from the Iron Jars Army, as well as a War Chanter. At the same time, I brought, like I said before, a collection of uh, miniatures from my uh, Sneak, uh, sneak uh, Disciples Army. Starting from the left-hand side, you can see that I got my uh, Knights of Chaos. Those guys have Mark Sneak as well. In the center, I got my Changelings, my unit of 20. Zangor, and those guys are absolutely beasts right behind them out my characters, which is Skexis of the uh, Dark Crystal. That's my uh, Zangor Shaman mounted on a Discus Niche. Right next to him is Flotsam on the left hand side, that's his Chaos from that's giving him plus one to uh, cast his spells. And then right next to him on the right hand side is my Chaos Lord of Sneech, uh, that's uh, Alcohol Hellbrass, the Champion of Sneech. He's also got the uh, Arcane uh, Hero, I believe it's called, the Arcane. Um, Oh, I forgot the name of the, of the the command of trait, but basically allows me to get two extra spells from the floor of fate. In this case, he's taking the bolt of change as well as a destiny spell that lets him reroll, uh, not reroll, but get additional destiny dice as the battle goes on. And the right hand side, I got my storm lords, which are my uh, ten chaos warriors armed with halberds as well. And then right across from me, right in the center, is my opponent's entire army. So, with uh, deployment talked about, let's go into the individual deployment zones and talk about where everything's located. All right, here's a close-up of my left-hand flank. They're located there are my second sons, my five Chaos Knights of Snakes. They're all packing Chaos Glaives. Then we get plus one on the damage, as well as minus one run on the charge as well. So we're going to see how those Chaos Knights do here. My plan here is to march forward my infantry units, try to surround and pound with both my Chaos Warriors, as well as my uh, Chaos Knights on the flanks, and use my Zangors to kind of like hold the center line. So that's the plan on this left-hand side. And here's the play of my center lines. As you can see that we got my changelings, my unit of 20 Zangor. Right behind them, I got on the left hand side, I got Flotsam, who's my chaos relays. We end up being plus one casting bonuses to both my Sneech Arcan, uh, my uh, Zangor Shaman, as well as my Chaos Lord, who's taking the arcane ability for his command, uh, for his command trace. He's got two uh, spells from Lord of Fate. Right there in the center, I got Skexis of the Dark Crystals. That's my uh, Zangor Shaman, giving the extra bonuses to uh, hit, or sorry, not to hit, to wound with the. Uh, with the Zangor unit as well to give us some kind of buffs as well. Same thing with my Chaos Lord right there to help out with uh, with any magic as well. Because they're both wizards during the hero phase, I'll be able to use the uh, Icon Bearers within this unit and start causing uh, some mortal wounds for shooting phases. 
And at the same time, I use my K-Lords, uh, Chaos Lords Unending Legion ability to call up new units when I roll a 4 or higher on a D6. That way that's going to be really helpful to help kind of sharp some of the weaknesses in my army. And secure my right hand flick, I got my uh, Storm Lords, which are my 10 uh, Chaos Warriors with Halberds. And they're there to kind of act as my protection of my flanks so that my main line doesn't get hurt. Uh, Chaos Warriors are a pretty, uh, uh, pretty solid group in order to take damage. They got two wounds apiece, four of saves. They can kind of dish out some decent damage as well. So I'm uh, feeling pretty good about my Chaos Warriors there protecting my right hand side. And as far as you can see, I got my Dice of Destiny. I actually rolled pretty good on this one. I got four fives, a four, two twos, and two ones, which could be really helpful for me as well. I could use the higher rolls for wounds, attacks, saves, that kind of thing. I call these for charges and runs. I could use the ones for battle shock tests, twos for adding some casting abilities, all kinds of goodness is what's really going on in this part. So yeah, that's gonna make up the uh, Dice of Destiny for this one. So with the deployment done with the uh, Disciples of New School, I talk to my buddy and his Crimson Killers. And finally, here's the play from my opponent, Brother Grim. Here's his Iron Jaws. You can see that he basically plays his entire hard fi hard fist right there in the center. On either side of his uh, War Chanter, his War Chanter is right there in the direct center. He's got the Bloods on the left hand side. He's also got the uh, the Reds on the right hand side as well. And in front of them, he's got that huge unit of 20 uh, Art Boys, which is the Immortals. So that's going to be kind of like a tough nut to crack. These guys are very, very tough. They're each packing two wounds apiece. They have really good attacks, really good armor save, really good bonuses from the War Chanter. And if I don't get, if, if, if I wipe up one of these unit, units, the War I could summon up another unit to take its place basically so it could be like a space invaders type situation where I'm fighting wave after wave of hard boys if I don't go uh, if I don't uh, deal with this soon pretty much my plan is pretty simple charge this unit try to outflank and outmaneuver it at the same time try, try to kill the war chapter with some magic uh, or try to get some uh, units to play right behind his battle lines and get them fully developed so yeah that's pretty much the plan on this one with that being said we go directly to the turn or top top of turn number one all right, Brother Grim and I both roll for initiative, and I basically win the part of this one. So that's because I get turn number one on this part. This photo is taken directly after the command phase. As you can see in this photo, I have an orange dice right behind my uh, Chaos Knights. And the reason why that's the case is because uh, I use my general's uh, command ability. He's got the Crown of Conquest, which allows him to use two leadership uh, command abilities every hero phase. So I decided to give Inspire Presence to this unit of Chaos Knights to help kind of bolster up because I'm planning on sending these guys into the fray as quickly as possible. At the same time, I use my general's uh, unending legions ability. I rolled a d6, rolled a perfect four in that part, so because then now I got to deploy a whole other unit of chaos uh, units from any from the mortals, from the slaves of uh, darkness uh, units. So the very first thing I did was set up another unit of chaos knights right here on the right hand side, left hand side of the. Uh, what you call of my opponent's army as you can see that i got five chaos knights located there the idea here is that i'm going to try to send him in as quickly as possible into his left hand flank of his army try to bog down his line so he really can't maneuver all that well and then start engaging him immediately in combat because chaos knights are really good at holding uh, your opponent in place and have they have three wounds apiece they got pretty decent armor saves their attacks could be better but you know you can't have everything in this one you know i'm not playing silver death i don't have all the cool goodness that silver death used to have so i have to kind of get my work around on that part so yeah that pretty much makes it the command phase and since my opponent's pretty much out of range for my magic we go directly to the movement phase all right here's a photo taken directly after the movement phase as you can see in this photo i waste no time whatsoever and try to move as quickly as i possibly can in order to engage my opponent starting from the left hand side right behind the house you really can't see it too well but it's my newly summoned unit of chaos knights are moving in between the tower as well as that house on the left hand side to kind of get ready to charge the left hand flank of that hard fist i also moved up my second sons as well i uh, unfortunately they won't be able to charge this round because i ran them so because of that they'll just kind of like located right there and try to charge my next turn so that's what i'm pretty much planning on doing on that part as well in the center lines there as you can see I ran up my Zangors. My Zangors can both run and charge in the same turn, so that part's actually kind of cool. So I run up that entire unit. I also take my characters, have them right flying right behind them to lend magical support, as well as bonuses to their combat as well. And as you can see on the right hand side, I also ran up my uh, Storm Lords as well, so that way they can start getting into position to charge on the right hand flank. Here's a better shot of my two units of Chaos Knights on either side of that house. Like I said before, I'm going to try to charge in that left hand unit of Chaos Knights. Then nearly someone to charge directly into his left hand flank to get his troops bogged down. So that way his uh, Memorials can't really go anywhere and then cause a, kind of like a traffic jam my opponent. So that way he can't really effectively maneuver his forces. And then probably charge in my Chaos Knights on my next turn after that part. So yeah, that makes it the close up on this one. And here's a close of my center lines. Uh, my Zangors are not within a good range for charging. However, I did close the distance between them. I am within range to use their Icon Bearer, so during my Magic Phase and my next Hero Phase, I can definitely send in some Mortal Wounds goodness, firing that way since I got two Wizards right behind them supporting them. So that part would be kind of nice as well. Plus, they'll be in range of them some of the spells and Magic Missiles that I can cast on my uh, leaders as well, like Bolt of Change and, and Arcane Bolt and uh, Buddha Mutation, and things of that nature. So that'd be kind of nice as well. And, and if my opponent decides to move up and charge me, I just have a good, pretty good position to defend my front. Uh, my front and engage in the close combat that way. So that makes deployment here in the uh, moving here in the center portion. 
And here's a close to my right flank on the other side of that standing storm my Zangors are on the right hand side I got my storm lords which are my 10 chaos warriors and they're like hey there just to protect my right hand flank from my lane line So with uh, movement out of the way and since uh, we don't have anything shooting going on because we don't have a shooting army We go directly to the charge phase in the charge phase, I just sent in my newly summoned Chaos Knights directly, charging directly into the mortals on the left hand side. Now that that unit is engaged in close combat, I kind of bogged down the Bloods, which are those 10 Chaos Warriors, no, sorry, 10 uh, Iron Jaws, Iron Boys on the left hand side there, on the left side of that, uh, right behind the Immortals. Now those guys are kind of bogged down. If they want to get into my troops, they have to go around the tower and get them out of position, or basically just stay where they're located at because they really can't move anywhere. So that part's kind of nice as well. And uh, that's the only unit that really charges those of my forces, brand or, or not within charge range. So with that being said, we go directly to the combat phase as well as the battle shock phase. All right, this photo is taken directly after the combat phase as well as the battle shock phase. I did absolutely poorly in this combat phase. I lost two chaos knights and also managed to put another wound on my center on my white chaos knight as well. So now I got three of those guys left over, one carrying an extra wound on top of them. I managed to kill like a small amount. I think I killed like two or three. Um, Hard boys in the name when it was all said and done. And you know what? This kind of reminds me of how spoiled I was when I got to play Sylvaneth. Because when I got to play Sylvaneth, when I used Dryads or any of my units to get bonuses for being inside of forests, or they get, you know, minus one to hit against them because they use Rapturing Songs and their opponents will like, get a bonus to hit because they use some other magical ability. Chaos Warriors, nope, all they got is what they got. And the only thing I got helping me out was my Destiny of my Dice dest my dice of Destiny is all I have to really help with my troops. I didn't use any of them really because I didn't want to waste them on, on this kind of combat. These guys, after all, that, if they die off, did and they get killed they don't really cost me anything because i didn't really use any points for these guys as a united summon so not such a big deal on that part but yeah that makes it the combat phase on this one and with that we go directly to the bottom of turn number one for the iron jaws all right, this photo is taken directly after the hero phase, actually. And what happens, you can see in this photo, is they decide to use their ram unleashing, unleashing Rampager's ability, which allows them to roll. What you do is you roll a d6 for each of the uh, units in your, in your army, and you get to move those guys that many inches during the hero phase. And then, of course, they have normally movement phase afterwards, which is really important for destruction army because the closer they can get to come to the groups of you, the better they off they are. And plus, my opponent, my opponent, I also take a... Uh, the uh, great rampager uh, for his command train on this part so any rolls that he rolls he also gets plus two on those inches as well so you can see in this photo in the career phase what he did is he moved the bloods over from the left hand side got them located there in the center in order to hold the back center there and also protect his war channel at the same time he moved up his bloods moved up outside the reds moved those guys up up to the so that wild with that's located on the right hand side and have them kind of occupying the positions right up there as well and they also moved his war channel a little bit so that way he's a little bit covered uh between behind his troops as you can see he's pretty much stacking up his units to get ready to uh, receive the chargers that are coming his way. And then after that, as you can see, that he also moved his troops within his locations as well, so that way he started engaging in close combat and uh, get into a good defensive position. So that makes up both the hero phase as well as the command phase for my opponent. And because these Iron Jaws, they don't shoot, and they send out to charge, and they got this point, we go directly to the combat phase. As you can see in this photo, I just did absolutely bad on this part. I think I managed to kill one of the uh, art boys in the process of doing that. I was just flubbing my rolls for my Chaos Knights. It was like I was dropping those dice like it was nobody's business. Of course, I did not use my Destiny dice because I didn't want to waste them on this combat. So as you can see that I killed, like, I think, two art boys, and they managed to break this unit down all the way to one guy. One guy left fled because of fell Battle Shock dice, and now that my uh, Chaos Knight, the one that's remaining, the red one there, he's carrying a wound as well so that part's kind of sad but at the same time like I said before I summoned this unit it doesn't really cost me any points per se so I really can't be too grumpy about that so that being said we go directly to the top of turn number two we roll for initiative so this is the photo taken after the command phase of the top of turn number two as you see in this picture uh, basically I want initiative on that part and so I do a couple of things first of all I once again put inspiring presence on my second sons because I'm planning on sending this guy charging in here a little bit for close combat so that part's gonna be really important for those guys at the same time I also use my chaos lords unending legions ability to sum up another unit of 10 chaos warriors with halberds on the right hand side as you see there I got my newly summoned unit there on the right hand side uh, pretty much I got those guys to put there because the idea is I'm going to send in my second sons into the Immortals, get those guys kind of tied down, engage those guys in close combat with my remaining Chaos Knight. Also lend some support by charging in my Zangors as well, so that way they got a little bit of additional help with that part as well. And also on the right hand flank, now I got two units of 10 Chaos Warriors that deal with that one unit of uh, Iron Jaws right in front, which is the, which is the, uh, the, the Reds. And so now that will kind of help me out balance that part as well. So that pretty much makes the command phase on this one. Here's a close of my opponent's main battle line with his immortals. And the reason why I'm showing this picture is because I managed to kill a couple of these guys off using some magical spells. All arcane bolt, I'm not sorry, not arcane bolt. Uh, Boot of mutation went off with my Zangor, with my Zangor shaman, Skexis of Dark Crystals. He managed to kill. Uh, 
I think one, yeah, I managed to kill one uh, Ard Boy at the same time. So you can see there I have my little uh, war, my little Zango Warrior kind of popping up right there to deal with that. So that's part's kind of nice, helping him out a little bit as well. I also use Bolted Change to kill another handful, like a one or two uh, uh, Ard Boys as well, as well as the uh, using the Icon Barriers over the range of my Zangors because they managed to put two more mortal wounds in that part as well. However, because these guys are Ard Boys and they got those uh, shields that they use, it's really hard to kill these guys because all they get, they get a second save, they get to roll D6s and they roll six, they get to normal mortal wounds as well so that part was kind of nuts but yeah that makes it the magic phase on this part for the hero phase and here's a close of my storm lords as well as another units of uh, chaos warriors that i summoned up as well there's 10 strong right there on the right hand side so that makes it my right hand flank as well as my hero phase with that being said we move directly into the movie phase all right, during the movie phase, because I'm Warriors of Chaos, I try to get as close as possible in order to engage with them in close combat as well. So you can see on the left-hand side, I move up my uh, second sons, get them in close enough positions that way they can get a successful charge into Immortals. Same thing with my, Zang with my Zangors, I move them up within charge within three inches so that way they can charge into the Immortals next turn as well. I also got my heroes as a sub power support in the back as well, getting magical support as well as giving them bonuses to their attacks. At the same time, I move up my two units of ten Chaos Warriors and Halberds, I move up the full five inches and get them with a good charge as for that part. I'm not too worried about the charges for my Chaos Warriors because if I happen to fail that charge, I do have Dice of Destiny to help me out with that, and so that way I can make sure that all my units engage in close combat. So that makes a movement here on this side of the board. Here's a close of my second sons as well as my Zangor and characters getting ready to charge in directly into the front lines of the uh, mortals and hopefully destroy that unit and then move on to kill the rest of his army. And here's a close of my two units of 10 Chaos Warriors getting ready to charge into the Reds right there on the right hand side outside that Sylveth Wild, Wildwoods. And like I said before, this is kind of a longer charge these two units of Chaos Warriors, but at the same time, I do have Destiny Knights that can help me out with that. I got a couple of fives I could use, so I'm not too worried about them engaging in close combat. So with movement over, we skip shooting because we have no shooting in this army and go directly into the charge phase. And as you see in this photo, I just sent everything in with the charge phase. All my charges were very successful. Starting from the left-hand side, I got my second sons as well as my uh, changelings engaged with the immortals. Hopefully, I can kill those guys off very quickly, and then hopefully kill the war chanter as well before he gets the ability to, uh, you know, sum up another unit. Uh, hopefully, that's the plan there. Also, on the right-hand side there too, I charged the second. I charged my storm lords as well as my newly summoned unit of uh, chaos warriors as well. Unfortunately for me, this newly summoned unit did lose one of my warriors because they had to take a dangerous terrain test when they charge across the uh, summon of the wild woods there. On the right hand side so that part was kind of sad but you know like i said before this is a newly summoned unit i'm not really too worried about losing those guys at all uh, as for my characters i kind of kept them back so that way they can lend magical support not worry about getting killed by anything in close combat so that makes it the charge phase on this one Here's a close-up of the main battle line of both my Zangors as well as my Chaos Knights so my second son is charging directly into the mortals and that combat's going to go pretty well for me i think and here's a close of my Chaos Warriors and Halberds charging directly into the Reds. And so with the charge phase over, we go directly to the combat phase. As you can see in this combat phase, it was absolutely brutal when it came down to it. I lost uh, my last of the newly summoned Chaos Knights, as well as one of my, older, one of my second sons as well. They also put a magic put a wound into one of them as well, so that part was kind of sad as, uh, for my troops. At the same time, they managed to kill about a quarter of my, uh, actually not a quarter, I think a third, yeah. They managed to kill a third of my Zangors in close combat because Iron uh, Iron Giant Orcs are just beasts when it comes to close combat. They get uh, bonuses to hit because my opponent gave them that uh, ability that the War or the war Trader has where they get plus one to hit, so they are hitting on three up wounding on three up as well i don't really have high saves for my zanger as well the only thing i have is two wounds but at the same time though i'm not really complaining because as you can see there too i also chopped down a couple of those guys with no problem whatsoever i get bonuses to hit for plus one so they're hitting on plus three for every nine models that are located in this unit so that part's kind of impressive as well plus they get plus one to hit as well because they also oh, sorry not plus one to hit they get three attacks i'm sorry i said two attacks when they're building uh two savage blades because they get additional attack every nine models in this unit Plus they get additional plus one to hit because of uh, they're using dual blades as well. And they also get bonuses to wound because they're near my uh, Zangor Shaman as well as my General. So because of that, these guys are hitting up on three of three of the three attacks apiece. So they really chopped up those guys as well. Zangor are just too powerful. They're just too awesome in my opinion. They're a really good army. A uh, really good unit for my army. So that pretty much makes up the combat phase here in the center portion of the board. Combat here on the right hand side didn't go according to plan either. Most of my attacks I kind of flood my rolls on, so because I think I only killed two of the Art Boys are located in this attack as well. They managed to kill, I think, one or two of my Chaos Warriors at the same time, so they're still kind of bogged down in combat here on the right hand flank. Um, like I said before, most of the most of it's coming down to my attacks, not landing whatsoever. I did use two of my Destiny Dice to make sure that these two units of Chaos Warriors did engage this unit of Reds right here on the right hand side, so I did use some of those. I didn't feel comfortable using any of them for my attacks, uh, just because I want to keep them reserved just in case I needed them for 
later. So uh, that makes it combat here on the right hand side. So with combat phase and battle shock phase over, we go directly to the bottom turn number two for the Iron Jaws. All right, this photo is taken both after the movement phase as well as the command phase for the Iron Jaws. As you can see in this photo, Brother Grim used his rampaging ability, moved up his bloods as quick as he possibly could, and also using that as well as a regular movement, got him within three inches of my Zanger units. He also shifted his Immortals over to the left, so that way his Immortals are now all dealing with my Chaos Knights and dealing with my Second Sons. Uh, pretty much his plan is, from what I can tell, he's going to charge the bloods directly into my Zangors and get those guys to develop engage in close combat, have the Immortals work on my Chaos Knights while his Reds on the right-hand side deal with my two units of Chaos Warriors. At the same time, he also tries to move his general out of the way so that way he doesn't get killed by magical spells. And that's pretty much what his idea is kind of like going with this one where he's getting his troops located at. So uh, that makes it both command as well as move phase for the Iron Jaws in turn number two. All right, here's a close of his main battle line between his immortals as well as my second sons, as well as his blood screen ready to charge into my Zangor. And you can see in the background there, like, he's a little bit blurry because of field of depth, depth of field, but as you can see in the background, he's got his war uh, chanter kind of like hanging by himself and trying to survive. And it makes sense because once I once I get done wiping out one of these units, you'll be able to summon again and get refreshed from force with some cells. So it's kind of important to keep that guy alive. And here's a close-up of his red still fighting my two units of uh, Chaos uh, chaos Warriors. If you notice, there's an orange die in the back of those uh, the reds. And the reason why is because he uses War Chandra ability to give a plus one to hit for these guys. So now these guys will be striking at three up and wounding on three up as well, which is pretty devastating from what I've seen so far with Iron Jaws. So with that being said, we get done with the move phase. Since there's no shooting phase because we're playing against Iron Jaws, uh, my buddy Grim goes directly into the charge phase. All right, as you can see in this photo, we go directly into the charge phase as well, and now our troops are engaged in close combat. He sends in his bloods as quickly as he can to deal with my Zangors. So with the charge phase over with, we go directly to the combat phase, as well as Battleshock phases. As you can see in this photo, the combat was absolutely brutal for my Zangors. He managed to cut that unit almost down in half after he got done chopping too much Zangors like it was nobody's business. Zangors can dish out a lot of attacks. That part is absolutely true. However, when it comes to receiving damage, they're kind of uh, weak on that part. They'll have a five-up save. If you go up with anything with friends, you're not going to pretty much survive anything that's going their way. I know they can have a better armor save as well as chance of surviving if you give them Arcanite shields to protect them with. But I just like the idea of having more attacks and then beak attacks on top of that. So attack Attacks upon attacks upon attacks. That just kind of appeals to me for some strange reason. Uh, the only reason why I didn't lose more guys in Battle Shock Test is because I used one of my Dice of Destiny for a 1 to make sure that part didn't happen as well. And my Chaos Knights, my second sons, oh my god, I am flubbing my attacks with my Chaos Knights it's like it's nobody's business. I'm not doing anything with these guys. I think I managed to put a wound. Maybe killed one uh, Ard Boy, I think was what ended up happening. How they managed to kill two of my uh, Chaos Knights, put another footing one on my other guy as well. It's a miracle that these guys didn't run for the hills for their Battle Shock test. My Chaos Knights are doing so poorly, it's not even funny on this part. So, yeah, that's what happened over there in the combat space on this left hand side. On the right hand side, combat's pretty lackluster as well. I managed to kill, I think, one or two more of the Ard Boys. They managed to kill one or two more of my guys as well, so not much is going there. Uh, pretty much my plan now is because it's turning into a grind fest, I'm doing poorly. Hopefully, as like you see in this picture, my casters will be within range of that uh, war chanter. Hopefully, they can take that guy with magic missiles on my next turn, assuming that I get the next turn because my opponent's been really rolling pretty hot on this one. I'm afraid to get initiative for the next round. So, yeah, that's what pretty much took place in the combat phase as well as the battle shock phase on this one. So this is the photo that's taken directly after turn number three, uh, after the command phase as well. As you can see, uh, basically I won the initial on that part. As you can see in the back there, if you could kind of see that war tender laying on his side, and the reason why is because I managed to blast that guy away with magic. That part was pretty epic on that part. What I did is I cast Bolt of Change, I uh, originally cast Bolt of Change using that spell that my uh, Chaos Lord can actually cast. I managed to put... Um, would you call it? I think I managed to originally put one wound on him because I will have like a one on that one. However, I decided to use one of my Dice of Destiny match but four wounds on him as well. I then cast Bolt of Boon of uh, Change as well, which my Zangor Shaman can cast. I managed to put another wound on that guy as well. And then finally, I was using my Icon Bearers for my uh, Zangors and managed to put the last two remaining wounds on that guy and finally shoot that guy off the board. And so now that War Chanter is now dead. As you can see in this picture, that War Chanter is now dead. He's lying on the side, being blasted away by the magical forces of Sneech. And uh, that's kind of boring. I was looking for my opponent because, for one, he doesn't get to receive any bonuses now from that guy uh, for his Iron Jaws. And at the same time, once I wipe out one of these Iron Jaw units in close combat, he won't be able to summon up another unit to those guys to reinforce his troops, which is pretty much the entire plan on this part. So now whatever Black Orcs I kill, he's never going to get back as well. 
As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the game. My opponent, Brother Grim, realizes that he won't be able to bring up any more of his black orcs, and pretty much all of his units are pretty much chewed up to begin with. He decides he's just going to surrender and just call the game at this point because his entire strategy was relying on the part that he could be able to sell up another unit of uh, our boys if uh, one of his units got wiped out. So that pretty much made it the end of that part as well. So as you can see here, not much is really left. I mean, technically speaking, my opponent's armies are still left. He just got bits and pieces of units kind of scattered all over the place at this point. So uh, it's not a complete tabling. It's just that he kind of gave up because he realized uh, he wasn't going to be able to win on that part. So yeah, that pretty much makes it this battle, and with this battle being over, we go directly to the after action report for this one. Sure, I could have stayed in the past. Could have even been king. But in my own way, I am king. Hail to the king, baby. All right, folks, now it's time for the After Action Report. This is the part of the Battle Report where we talk about what went well, what went poorly, and what we can learn for the next time that we do battle. This is the After Action Report for Age of the Realms Battle Report number 19. It was a 1,000-point battle that was fought between my Legion of the Hellmouth with my Disciples of Sneetch versus Brother Grimm's The Crimson Killers of the Iron Jaws. It ended up being a victory for yours truly. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the factors that kind of led to this victory. First of all, in my opinion, I think my buddy Brother Grimm's units were too big. Uh, he, he should really went for having four units of 10 rather than having a huge unit of 20. Uh, that unit of 20 kind of caused a traffic jam, so he wasn't able to maneuver around and fight pretty well. So plus, if he also had smaller units as well, any units that got wiped out, he could easily summon up again and kind of help him out in that part as well. Uh, another effect that kind of helped me out as well is that Unending Legion's command ability is off the hook. I mean, it's really powerful for my Chaos Army. Also, have maneuverability. It gets me into, uh, for a lot of the shortcomings of my army halves, especially when it comes to movement, I can summon up units to help flank outmaneuver my opponent and take them out that way as well. Now, there is a flip side of this. I I do realize that one of the main complaints I've been getting on my, war, my YouTube channel when it comes to uh, Age of Sigmar is the use of summoning pools. Now, in my opinion, and as also as the fellow gamers in my unit, in my gaming group as well, we think that the summoning pools ability is kind of weak sauce. We don't like the idea of having to pay for something that should be coming out anyways when it comes to spells. And here's why we think this is the case. We have a buddy of ours, his name is Scream of the Emo, and he plays a vampire account, sorry, he plays undead. And whenever we got a fight against him, we always feel bad for him because he only has like half his troops on the board because he has to keep the other half off of the side in order to summon those guys up. So every single time we go to the game store and watch him play, he's always getting beat all the time because he keeps on I have to deal with all these guys coming out of troops at a time. He did fail his magic casting rolls, or the case may be, he canceled any of his troops. We think it was not really good. We decided we're not going to have any summoning pool points. We're not going to play that nonsense. We're just going to sum up whatever we want, whatever the chance we get. However, we decide not to abuse it too much. If we decide to sum up something, we're taking the minimum starting number of troops for units. As you can see in this battle program, I summoned up my new units of Chaos Knights as well as Chaos Warriors. I didn't summon 20 of them at a time. I just brought in 5 Chaos Knights and 10 Chaos Warriors and just brought them in their small groups as well. So long as we figure we're not abusing it too much, it shouldn't be a big, a big deal on that part. Also, nothing that really helped me on this battle was that I could dominate the magic phase pretty easily. And because of that, it was extremely important for my army. I could dish out mortal wounds and weaken my opponent's main battle lines so that way my troops could finish them off in close combat. I could replenish my discipline dice as well. And also give up boosts for my troops and help buff them up as well in close combat. So that part's really nice as well. Zangor, once again, are probably the best unit in the Disciples of Sneech army. They can pretty much do everything you can ask of them. They can dish out a ton of attacks, do a lot of damage, do some decent shooting if you get enough wizards located with them to dish out mortal wounds. However, the one thing they don't have is the ability to outlast. That part is kind of true. They don't really have a good, good save. But then again, these guys I think are running for offense and defense. You know, if I want to play defense, I should have just stuck with my similar other army. So, anyways, that part's kind of nice as well. I'm also thinking about adding, maybe changing out some of the units of my armies because I rolled really poorly with my Chaos Warriors and my Chaos Knights. I'm actually rethinking about using the points for those guys for something different. I'm thinking about maybe adding horrors to my armor or maybe adding more characters to my army or adding more Zangor. I'm not really sure yet. I'm still kind of fence on this. Maybe I might try them out again in another battle. Like I said before, it's it's a new army, so I'm still learning how to play it effectively, and I love playing Disciples of Sneeze so far. I think it's a kind of interesting army. It's so much different than what I played with before when it came to Age of Sigmar, so I'm having a blast doing this as well. As always, this is a great game. I love playing against Brother Grimm all the time, and I'm looking forward to the rematch. As always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You guys make this all worth it. I love interacting with you guys and my fans as well as my audience. They give me some really good ideas, and uh, you know I like the interaction as well. Also, feel free to check out my Instagram account for the latest news on my hobby. For those of you who are 
checking out my Instagram account. You've already seen this army being posted up online as well. The same thing with the Ninth Age. When I was getting that army ready for Ninth Age as well, you can see the photos already. You knew exactly what I was going to as well. Also, if you notice, I also got some other miniatures that are primed in black in the background, which I'm working on for another series that we'll be working on here in a little bit for our our uh, for our um, channel. So if you're following me on Instagram, you'll be able to see that as well. And also, feel free to check out my Google Plus page for any community updates when it comes to the Warhammer YouTubes. That's pretty much going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been fun. I love playing against new, the new Sneech Army. We'll see you guys on the next one on every Sunday. We alternate between this show as well as on the Ninth Saga. So we alternate Sundays between uh, the Ninth Age as well as Age of Sigmar. And then Thursday, of course, we always alternate between Warhammer 8th Edition and Fantasy Battle as well as Necromunda. In this case, this Thursday coming up is going to be Warhammer. So until then, next time, you guys, you guys take it easy. We'll see you guys on the flip side.